Hi everyone, welcome to Eco Learning Classes. This is Professor Geeta Mahesh. Dear students, today we are going to discuss functions of RBI, which is very important for four marks. You can see here the functions of RBI is divided like this. The first function is monopoly of note issue. Second one is banker to government, banker's bank. When, while it is performing banker's bank function, it will do or it acts as a banker to bank in the form of custodian of cash reserve of commercial banks, lender of last resort, clearing house. The fourth one is credit controller. Now let us discuss this in detail. So while attending this question, please do write introduction. The first you need to write. RBI was established on 1st April. So when it was established on 1st April 1935 as per the Act, RBI Act of 1934. And this RBI was nationalized by Government of India on 1st January 1949. And it was renamed as Central Bank of India. The head office of RBI is located in Mumbai. So what you need to write dear students? First you have to write RBI was established on 1st April 1935 as per the RBI Act of 1934. RBI was nationalized by government on 1st January 1949 and it was renamed as Central Bank of India and RBI office is located in Mumbai. This is the first function, the monopoly of note issue. So RBI has sole authority to issue currency in the country. Here you can see dear students, RBI has sole authority for issue of currency in the country. And our RBI issues currency notes of all denominations, rupees 10, 20, 50, 100, 200, 500 and 2000 rupees. It has to maintain minimum reserve of 200 crores of which at least 115 crores should be in the form of gold. Remaining 85 crores has to be in the form of foreign exchange reserve and government securities. Whenever it is going to print the currencies, it can print the currencies by maintaining our Indian uh, RBI is following minimum reserve system. According to this minimum reserve system, they have to maintain the minimum reserve of 200 crores. Out of this, 115 crores has to be in the form of gold. Remaining 85 crores, it can be in the form of foreign exchange reserve or government securities. So which method it is following, dear student? It is following minimum reserve system. And with respect to coins, in India, coins will be issued by government of India. Who is going to issue the coins in India? Government of India. So next one is banker to the government. So RBI will act as a banker to the government. When it is acting as a banker to the government, RBI acts as a banker, agent, and financial advisor to central and state government. When it is acting as a banker, it maintains a current account for keeping government cash balances. It accepts and payments for government. Here is government and here we have a public and this is let us take it as RBI. Okay, dear students, so whenever government need to make a payment to public, RBI will make a payment on behalf of government. 
as RBI has a government account with itself. Now, public need to pay anything to the government. On behalf of government, it accepts receipts. So, it accepts receipts and payment for government. It gives loans and advances to government. As a banker, RBI will give loans to government. So, as it opens a current account, it keeps a cash balance with this. And whatever the payment need to make government to public, payment need to be made by government to public, that time on behalf of government, RBI is going to make a payment. If public need to pay anything to the government, then from public, it accepts receipts. Okay, dear students, and at the same time, as it is a leader, RBI is a leader of financial sector, on financial matter, RBI is going to give financial advice to government from time to time. Now, the banker's bank, as a banker's to bank, all activities of commercial banks are controlled and managed by RBI. As we know, RBI is a leader of the financial sector and it acts as a banker to bank. So, all commercial banks are under the control of RBI and it is going to manage activities of these commercial banks. Dear students, here you can see this is the Reserve Bank of India and these are the commercial banks. All these banks need to open an account with the RBI. After opening an account with the RBI, they have to deposit a cash with the RBI. And how much cash they have to keep, that RBI is going to decide. Whether it is 10%, 20% or 15% of deposits that each bank is going to accept. Okay, on the basis of percentage, each bank has to keep deposits with the RBI. See here you can see RBI acts as a custodian of cash reserves of commercial banks. Every bank must maintain certain portion of its deposit with the RBI or central bank. These reserves are used as an instrument of monetary policy. So, monetary policy cash reserve ratio. So, whenever the banks has more money, then they can give more loans. Whenever giving more loans is going to lead to inflationary situation, that time, that time RBI is going to increase this cash reserve ratio. So, in this way, it is going to use as an instrument of monetary policy. So, as a custodian of cash reserves of commercial bank, all banks need to open an account with the RBI and they have to keep a certain proportion of its deposits with the central bank. Lender of last resort. Whenever these banks, commercial banks are in a financial uh, difficulties, that time what RBI is going to give? It is going to give a financial help in the form of loans and advances. For this function, RBI is known as lender of lost resort. See here, central bank holds excess reserves of banks. Those reserves can be make advance to banks temporarily in needs of funds and acting as a lender of last resort. See, all banks will open account and they will keep money with the RBI. Any one bank is in a difficulty, all others money which is kept with the RBI is going to use that as a uh, reserves, okay? Reserves of all these banks are used to finance temporarily to a bank which is in a financial crisis and it is going to help by giving advances, okay? And acts as a lender of last resort. RBI lends to commercial banks when they are not able to get loan anywhere. So, here 
they, uh, the bank immediately will not reach RBI. It will act. Uh, it will try to get a loan from neighbor banks. But even from neighbor banks, if it is not able to receive, and there is a rush, public is rushing towards a bank to withdraw their deposits. That time, RBI is going to help that particular bank. Next one is clearing house. See here, central bank holds cash reserve of all commercial banks and it can easily settle the loans of various commercial banks against each other. What do you mean by that? Let me uh, take example. So as already I told, all these banks will have account with a RBI in the same manner, these two bank, bank A and bank B do have account with a RBI. Now, A bank has given a loan to B bank, but in time, B bank is not able to clear loan of A bank. So that time, the case will be go to RBI. So here, both bank B and bank A has an account with the RBI. Now, what RBI will do? Simply, it will transfer the cash reserves of bank B with the RBI will be transferred to bank B. See, for example, uh, bank A has given 10 crores to B bank. Now, B bank is not able to repay. In this bank uh, with the RBI, bank B has an account with the RBI and it has kept 20 crores. Okay. Now, out of 20 crores, 10 crores, how much? 10 crores will be transferred to bank B. In this way, it is going to settle the loans of various commercial banks against each other, against each other. This function is called as clearing house. The next fourth function is controller of credit. As of a leader of financial sector, it is a responsibility of RBI to maintain the balance between supply of money and demand for money. So whenever supply of money is more with the public, I am talking with the public, that time loans has to be decreased. That means giving loans has to be decreased so that supply of money can be decreased and can bring a balance between uh, supply of money and demand for money. When supply of money is more, see supply of money is greater than demand for money, then it leads to inflationary situation. Okay, the opposite to this situation we call it as deflation. When supply of money is less than demand for money, then it is called as deflationary situation. So both has to be managed. And they have to bring a balance between supply of money and demand for money. Now, who is giving or who is supplying? We all know that, uh, of course, uh, RBI is a, a monopoly to issue notes. But even commercial banks are not just a per viewer, are just not dealing with a money. But they are also manufacturers of money. What type of money they are manufacturing? credit money so they are creating a credit money and that credit money will also increase as the purchasing power of a uh, public when purchasing power increases definitely demand increases and it leads to inflationary situation as demand increases prices also increases so in order to bring a balance between supply of money and demand for money it is going to use quantitative and qualitative methods to control the credit creation by commercial banks so central bank controls supply of money and credit in the economy it uses quantitative and qualitative methods to control credit creation by commercial banks Dear students, if you like, please like, share and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.